What is up my thrifty friends? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are doing a what sold. I have not done one of these in exactly 22 days. So it's time. It is time to catch you guys up in what has been going on in my business. Sales have been really good. I'm not gonna lie, like for me in my closet, the items that I'm moving both between Canada and the US have been really good. And I think with combined closets, so my grand total is $6,125. Uh, we will break everything down. I also did have an eBay sale. I just started cross-listing everything over to eBay this week. So I'm expecting those to add into my total sales as well. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I got some different brands, obviously still Lulu in here. That's my best-selling brand. I know when I asked um, what everyone's preferred videos were, there was a lot of comments that my content has a lot of Lulu in it. And it's just what I have access to. But I don't think it's just specific to Lululemon. I think if you can find Viore, Athleta, what are some other brands? Like there's lots of athletic brands. I think the important thing to know is that there are kind of like staple colors or styles of athletic pants and the different brands will all do well. I just have the most access to Lululemon. We are just gonna roll into the sales. We're gonna go through my Canadian closet, then my US closet, and then we're gonna go through all the data and analytics. If for some reason you wanna skip, I am gonna time mark my Canadian closet, my US mark closet, and then the analytics at the end if you want to hop around. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna go into the Canadian closet. First sale to kick this video off is a Lululemon twin rib turtleneck sweater, size eight, sold for $72. I think I've sold three of these in the last year. They always sell for really good money. They're pretty current. Yeah, they just hold good value. When I find them, as long as they're not shrunken and the there's a wool content, I think they're merino wool, as long as they're not felted either, sometimes they can be in rough shape. I'll pick them up and pay up for them because they just, they hold a good value and the colors are all nice. I think because it's a current style. So fantastic sale to start off the video. Next up, I have a Free People Gray Wool Mohair Cardigan Sweater, size small. This sold for $65. Anything with mohair, with wool, with cashmere, alpaca, these are all material contents that I am looking for. I don't think they are specific to brand, although Free People tends to have really nice material contents in their sweaters. But, um, and it was a neutral tone. That'd be another reason, like, I love selling grays. Not saying that you can't sell bright colors. I think there's people who have closets that have more colorful array, but my niche and my avatar and my ideal customer, that's who I'm shopping for when I'm out. So this one sold for $65, another really good sale. Uh, next up, we have a vintage wool blend Coogee style dad sweater. This was a size large. It had like that textured stripe look that Coogee sweaters have. I think this is the brand Tundra, which also holds a really good value. And it sold for $65. That was a fantastic sale. I don't think I have any more sweaters with that textured knit pattern on it, but I love finding these. These ones always do do well for me. Next up, we have a vintage abstract print silk button down blouse in a size large. This sold for $50. Silk is another material content I don't find often, but I will almost always pick it up. The only thing I'm paying attention for is their fading. I don't know why, but for some reason on silk, it's common to find fading spots, stains, rips, holes, things like that. But as long as it doesn't have any flaws, no matter the pattern or the color, I'm going to take a chance on it just because it's so hard to find silk blouses right now that are 100% silk uh, that are like that vintage quality. So I think it's a really safe bet. If you're going to like a mom and pop thrift store, if you come across silk blouses, pick them up. They hold a good value. Next is a pair of aloe yoga leggings. These were a tan neutral color, size large. They sold for $50. I think these held the value because they were the neutral tone. They were a size large and they were like a solid pattern. Some of the aloe leggings have very like dated features on them. Same thing as Lulu. So I'm pretty cautious when picking them up. 
Uh, I would recommend if you're grabbing aloe and you're paying up for them any, any amount, I would double check what they're selling for and do they have any dated features? Like, do you know the, the age of the leggings? All right, next we have a pair of Allen Edmonds Sea Island suede loafers. These were in a men's size eight. They sold for $80. Allen Edmonds was a newer to me, uh, not even a newer, a new to me brand a couple months ago. And I know a lot of people commented in the comments, they retail for a really high value but resale isn't as strong as it was maybe a year or two ago. I paid like $15 for these. They sold for 80. I think that's a pretty good return. Even if I found these and they had sold for 50 or 60, I think that still would have been a good return for me. So Allen Edmonds, I will continue to look and pick up as long as they are in good condition. And my cost of goods is low. So if I'm paying 15 or less, I think I can make, you know, more than a 20 or $30 profit on them. Next, we have a pair of Ms. Moo's knee-high boots. These were in like the brightest cherry red color, size seven, and they sold for $72. I have had these boots for over a year. They were in a death pile. They just got listed this summer. So uh, I would say they took about three months to sell. Ms. Moo's, I'm pretty particular on what I'm picking up, but then I hear other people you know, on YouTube talking about Ms. Moose and they grab them all the time. So I think it's just dependent on what is your cost of goods. If it's low enough, take the chance. Also, maybe be prepared to sit on them for a couple months, but happy with this sale. Like this, this was, I wish I would have had these listed sooner, to, to be honest. Why do you wait so long? Why do we allow death piles to sit there? I don't know. It's just like a money pile. You can't make money off of things that aren't listed, right? All right, next is a pair of Levi's Wedgie Icon Fit Tapered Leg Jeans, size 24. They were super tiny. They sold for $50. I try not to grab too many of the smaller sizes. Like I try and only have one or two in my inventory at a time. If those haven't sold, I'm not gonna pick up more. I haven't been finding as many Levi's Wedgie Jeans either. Uh, they're not selling as quickly and for as high a dollar as they were last year. So I'm just a little bit more apprehensive with them. Next up is, I don't know if you guys remember, I just thrifted this not too long ago. It was a Las Americas sweater in um, like really nice jewel tones, wool knit, made in Peru. Uh, it sold for $50 to Hermoinus Fines. And this is Carolyn. Carolyn has bought off me before and she just loves wool sweaters. So I'm the sweater queen. I feel like I find so many nice knit sweaters and yeah, thank you so much, Carolyn. Uh, she left me a love note. This sweater is amazing. Exceptional service as usual, A++ seller. Oh, you're too kind. You're too nice. Thank you so much. Carolyn, that sweater, like I said, that was one of my favorite sweaters. I think that I've thrifted since I started, like that is one of my favorite sweater sweaters. And I think it was the tones of it, the really deep, rich jewel tones. I loved it. It, it, was, um, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous item. Next is a Lululemon Every Moment sweatshirt, size 10. This one sold for $45. It went to Sarah Dawes. She left me a love note. Love, love it and thank you. You are very welcome. I will always pick up Lululemon sweaters, especially like crew neck um, sweatshirt type material ones, as long as the cost of goods is reasonable on them. I'll pick them up. They're pretty quick flips and especially in neutral tones in my closet. Uh, next is a community. This is uh, an Aritzia brand. It's one of their one of their brands. And it was a cardigan open front kind of like poncho knit sweater. I don't know how to describe it. It was beautiful. And it had I think it was an alpaca blend in it. So it was like super, super soft. Uh, this sold for $54. And it went to Wild River. Thank you so much. She did leave a love note as described fast shipping. Thank you tabs. You're welcome. I'm so happy you love it. It was like a beautiful piece. I could not walk away from it when I saw it at the thrift store. I just love material content, high quality material, and neutral tones, like everything, everything about that. Next is a handmade unbranded sweater. This was in a size large. It had a hood on it and a little front pocket. This one sold for $42. 
she did leave enough a love note great shirt with a good smell good deal and fast shipping so thank you so much happy you enjoyed that one next is a pair of lululemon groove pants these were regular length size eight they sold for fifty dollars very very nice pair of pants i do struggle sometimes with the older lulu because it's that older luan material where like everything sticks to it i wish i i wish they had never gone through that phase with that material because that material is a little bit tougher next up is a pair of levi's 501 wedgie straight leg jeans these were in a size 16 w they sold for 52 dollars i love finding levi's in plus sizes like i do not find them often uh, i did come across these at the thrift store as well so it was a really really easy you know purchase I, I didn't even question it anytime i can find them at the thrift store i pay much less than i do at the buy sell trades i don't find a lot that falls into my niche and my i guess overall general store or business or closet so it is it is a bit tougher sometimes but yeah when i can find them they're pretty good sales all right next up we have a pair of poppy and barley leather ankle booties these sold for 90 dollars. they were in a size eight uh, i paid like 15 dollars for these and i found these after two other resellers had combed through the shoe section so i think when you are out shopping and you notice there's other people there shopping and you feel intimidated rely on your brand knowledge right everyone's looking for different things um the two people that were there that day are both local sellers so they're facebook sellers they may only be looking for very specific brands that sell well locally and yeah i was like so surprised i walked away with three pairs of boots and one was a pair of uggs one was a pair of sorrels and these poppy barley ones and all of them were not easily identifiable like i would have looked at them because of quality flipped them over and then was like oh okay these are good but they weren't like super branded shoes that would stick out so look for quality leather quality soles like there's certain features that you can look for in shoes that will lead you to the brands that are more expensive and that's probably like my best tip the other thing I'll do when I go into the boot section is I'll walk and I'll just flip all the soles. And it, if it's like a cheap rubber sole, I don't even check the brand. If the sole looks like a good quality, then I'm going to unzip it and look at it and see what is the brand if it's not on the bottom. But that's another little pro tip when you're going through the shoe section. Uh, she did leave me a love note. Gorgeous, sexy, classic. I'm thrilled with my new boots. Thank you for the quick shipping and careful packaging. Much appreciated. Oh, yay. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, they're gorgeous shoes, a brand that I don't personally own, but it's a quite sought after brand here in Canada and it's Poppy Barley, Poppy and Barley, Poppy Barley, something like that. All right, next up, we have a handmade couchin sweater, zip up style jacket, size large. This sold for $77. I put couchin in the title but it's actually not a couchin one. It's a sesa, oh, sesa quin, what the heck word? If you know the style of this, let me know. I can't, like the word is on the tip of my tongue and it's not one that I commonly use, but I want to start using that term for the ones that are applicable. I just call this a couchin because it's that really heavy knit style sweater. Um, and they do really well. If you can find these, I would say they're probably selling for over $70. And when they have the unique pattern into them, you should be able to get 90 and up for them, especially if they're in good condition. Uh, next up was a cool flip. So I paid, I wanna say I paid about $30 for this jacket, maybe 40. And it's a vintage Sears shearling button down coat in a size large. And it sold for $180. So I listed this at $220, maybe even $240. These are really like valued jackets, especially when they're in good condition. This one was in excellent condition. So I, yeah, I'm happy it sold for $180. Not gonna lie, I was probably gonna accept a little bit less if I had to, but. They're just such cool jackets. So if you have any of these sitting in your death pile or you see them out thrifting and you can get them for a good cost of goods, pick them up, get them listed. People are shopping for them. 
Next up is a pair of Carhartt denim mid-rise flannel lined pants or jeans in a size two. They sold for $51. Uh, I think I found these at maybe a buy sell trade and they were pretty cheap. So Carhartt, obviously, I think that's like an ongoing bolo brand and you want to keep your cost of goods as low as possible. These, these were like a fairly new pair. So if someone needed a pair of these for winter, for work, uh, they were able to save some money than shopping at the store. All right, next is a new to me brand. I, I mean, I know of it, but I've never actually found it. And it was a pair of good American, good 90s loose jeans. And these were in a size 18. They sold for $68. Good American, um, I think especially in your plus sizes, can hold some really good value. I feel like in my U.S. closet, um, it's pretty flooded with like the average sizes, but if you can get the plus sizes, I think that's where you can, you can really make some money. If you know anything else about Good American, um, drop it down in the comments. I don't know a lot. I have had some smaller, actually, I lied. I had some bathing, I think I had three baby bathing suit bottoms that were Good American and they just took forever to sell. And they were like, I think they were a size zero, which is pretty tiny. Um, but they were really cute new tags they took for ever to sell. Uh, next, we have a Mountain Equipment Co-op Aquinator Black Raincoat Size Small. This sold for $51. This would be the equivalent to REI in the United States. Mech stuff. If I can find newer style, excellent condition, I will grab it. I am more hesitant in gra grabbing some of their other pieces. I don't always find like their shorts or their hiking pants hold as much value and my thrift stores mark them up at like four, 10 or $14. So if I'm paying 15 and they're only gonna resell for 30, by the time I pay fees, it's not really worth the profit to me. So yeah, I, I would feel like jackets and sweaters are where I would more lean to if I was picking them up at the thrift store. But if you have access to these at the bins or like much lower cost of goods, grab them. They're, they're easy sales. People are always looking for those brands. Next, we have a pair of Lululemon Dance Studio Pants. These were in a size four. They sold for $68. My dance studio pants usually sell within a week. They've been doing really well. I have a pair of Ugg Neils boots up next. These were zippered mid-calf length and size six and a half. So they were a small size, but they sold for $69 and they were like so nice. Honestly, I think if these would have been a nine and a half, I would have just kept them for myself. But yeah, really nice boot. Next up, we have a pair of Birkenstock Milano style sandals, size six. These sold for $65. I'm so shocked selling Birkenstocks at like good value in the middle of November, but it's happening and I'm okay with that. That was a nice flip. Next, we have a Free People Moss West um, asymmetrical sweater, size extra small. This one sold for $48. I've had this for quite a few months. I actually thought it would sell sooner because of the color, but for some reason, maybe the extra small was why. I'm not really sure. It just took a while to sell. Uh, next, we have a Terzo Millennio Scoop Neck Crochet Top. I think this was a cotton linen blend. Very like beach resort, holiday, going to Italy. Um, this style and cotton and linen material contents do really well for me. I'm usually able to sell them for over $45, sometimes upwards to $55 or $60. So if I come across them in the thrift store right now, I'm picking them up. And typically I'm getting these for like five to $8 a piece. So pretty good profit margins had on, on this style. And I never used to pick them up before. It's kind of a new thing to me in the last few months. Next, we have a pair of Dansko Sophie sandals. These were floral, kind of a wedge heel. Uh, size 8, they sold for $55. Dance Co. shoes in good condition can hold good value, so keep that in mind when you're out. If they're all beat up, I tend to avoid them. Uh, next, we have a handmade Cowichan full zip knit jacket, size large. This one sold for $100, but as you can see, this one has a different pattern on it. So when it has the, like the nice knit pattern into it, I feel like I tend to get more money for it, which is 
awesome and I probably paid like $20 for this one so pretty good profit I, I think I made 20 40 so I made about 60 bucks off it and yeah that's I'm good with that all right, we got a couple more Canadian sales, then we'll switch over to the US ones. Next up, I have a pair of Spanx leggings, size small. They sold for $40. I have a couple pairs of Spanx, but I think I need to cross list them over to the US side. Wendy had shared some information about comps and solds on Posh US with Spanx, and I think I'm trying to sell these in the wrong market. And for some reason, I don't think they're all cross-listed over there. So I'm gonna have to do that when I'm done recording this video. Just remind myself. All right, next we have a vintage merino wool crop print sweater, size large. This one sold for $55. Uh, my vintage sweaters have been selling for $45 to $70, depending on the material content, the patterns, the sizes, things like that. But um, I haven't been buying as many because I have so many sweaters to get rid of right now. Looking at these sales, I think I'm going to try and get, you know, three or four next time I go out sourcing just to keep replenishing those um, vintage, vintage sweater options, I guess, in my closet. All right, next up, we have a Storette's Jessie Raw Edge Tweed Skirt Set. It's like a jacket and skirt, size small. This sold for $65. I had never heard of this brand before, and it is a Korean brand. It actually holds pretty good value. When I searched up comps on their different items and what the retail values were on them, um, I think with the right pieces, they could hold value. So if you come across this brand out in the wild, make sure to look up solds for the specific style and color that you find because I do think that there's a market of people looking for this brand. Next, I have a bundle. This is a three-piece bundle. It's sold for $160. I have a pair of Ugg Bailey button uh, pull-on suede boots. These were in a size seven. I have a pair of Lululemon 2021 Fast and Free tights. These are the 7 8 length, size 10. Uh, and then I have a pair of Ugg Australia Vintage 1890. I think it's a Kenley boot in a size 7 as well. So two pairs of Uggs, a pair of Lulus, $160. I feel like that was a pretty good deal for all three of these. And um, yeah, happy to see the Uggs go. I don't, I, Uggs take up so much room <laughs> in my storage bin. So all my big boots, I'm like, just so happy, you know, when they move along to their next home because it just frees up some room for more shoes. Uh, next, we have a pair of Lululemon ABC pants. These were in a size 30 men's. They sold for $50. And the last sale is a Lululemon down and around vest, size 10, and this one sold for $50 as well. I purchased this for myself, but I just didn't like how it fit on me. So yeah, turn that one, turn that one around. All right, let's get it logged into my US closet and we'll go over the sales on that side. And there's been some good sales over there. Not gonna lie, my ASP dropped a little bit on the state side, but we'll go over that after. But still some, some good sales. So everything is sales over $40. Going back, so first item to sell is a pair of Lululemon Dance Studio pants. These were lined and in navy blue size six, they sold for $86. Uh, my dance studio pants sell for more money on the U.S. side than they do the Canadian side. They seem to be a pretty coveted style, I would say, on the U.S. side. Next, I have a three-piece bundle in it is a Lululemon Restless Pullover in a size 6, then a Lululemon For the Chill of It jacket size 6, and a Making Moves bra size large, so three-piece bundle. This sold for $110, some good sales in there. Then I have, and I'm just like warning you guys, my US closet, lots of Lulu stuff. Uh, next up, we have a pair of 2021 stretch high rise jogger pants. These were in camo, size eight. They sold for $60. Next sale, we have a Wilfred Free Maryland sweater. And this was a wool blend kind of jacket style. Size large, sold for $55. Wilfred, I've talked about this brand before. It's an, an 
Aritzia sub-brand. So kind of like how Revolve has like their sub-brands, Aritzia has their sub-brands, and Wilfred would fall in there. Next, I have a Sarah Passini open cardigan knit long sleeve sweater. And this one sold for $59. Sarah Passini, I don't come across it very often, but her items, if you can get like the substantial items like sweaters, pants, um, like I feel like all of her items do well, but her substantial items can hold more value for sure. And retail value is really high on, on her items. Definitely too like that login look style. Next, I had a Lululemon Define jacket. This was a size medium. It was an older style. I really couldn't figure out the exact size of it. And it sold for $50. Uh, next, we had a pair of Arcteryx hiking pants, mid-rise, straight leg, size 12. This sold for $50. These were a little bit of an older style, but it doesn't matter. I feel like with Arcteryx, as long as it's still in really good condition, you're probably going to get a good value for it. So I would pay up to like $10 or $15 for an Arcteryx pair of pants. Pretty much anything except for their tops, like their t-shirts, like their... Um, less substantial pieces but pants their hiking pants do pretty good next i have a pair of john fluvog ankle boots these were like a lace-up style size eight they sold for 176 dollars very very happy with this sale i feel like i might even have one more pair of john fluvog in my inventory i'd have to look through but yeah, I've been sitting on them a little bit longer than I used to. So a couple years ago, they would sell so quickly for a good dollar. And now I feel like they're just a little bit of a slower sale for me. Next up, we have a vintage red wool blend boyfriend blazer jacket. This sold for $52. I've had this for probably a year. I'm not even going to lie about it. I've had this one forever, but I love it. It was gorgeous. It was a gorgeous piece. It just was waiting for the right person. So happy I was able to get fifth, over $50 for it. I was hoping that it was going to hold good value. I feel like it should have, but it was just waiting for that right buyer. I've probably declined or count, countered out of lower offers. I just was pretty firm on what I was hoping to get for it. Next, we have an Anthropology Emma Leopard Print Yak blend sweater. This was new with tags that sold for $80 size small. A uh, little bit of a different print on it but it was so soft like the yak material content super super soft. Um, yeah love those. Next we have a Lululemon scuba hoodie. This was in a nice light lilac purple size 4 sold for $40. Uh, we got a couple of items here. Uh, next is a Swiftly Tech half zip mock neck sweater or pullover top, size 10. That sold for $46. I got a pair of Speed Tight full on Lux Stream sequin snake size 10 leggings. These were Lululemon as well. They sold for $40. Um, and then another sale, a 2021 Cash Lou knit textured wrap cardigan sweater whatever um, and that one sold for $49. I am a little disappointed in that sale. I was hoping to get more money for it especially with it being such a current sweater being a 2021 and nice neutral tone cashmere blend you know but whatever it is what it is and I sent out some discounts and she took the offer. Next up, we have a Babaton Keith jacket. This was a collarless tailored blazer. Size 2 sold for $78. Um, this one was not listed very long either, maybe like two weeks. We have another pair of Lululemon leggings. These were in movement, in movement 7 8 tights, size 6. They sold for $60. Um, ooh, this one is a nice one. I don't know if you guys remember that I didn't thrift these too long ago, but a pair of born ankle booties, they were like a pull on kind of Southwestern style size seven. Those sold for 40 bucks. I was happy with that. I think I paid like $8 for them maybe. So nice, quick flip. 
Uh, next, we have a Lululemon Define jacket. This was a mock neck style, size eight, sold for $50. Love those sales. Those Define jackets, I'm paying up for because they're selling so quickly. So I'll pay, I end up paying about $15 Canadian. I think that works out to probably about $10 US and they sell for 50. Like it's a pretty good profit margin on the Define jackets for me. Um, and then th this is a little bit of an older style. So I find those newer style ones. And if I can get them in like a nice hot pink, the hot pink ones do so well. Like I'm selling those ones for over $65. Um, and I will pay upwards of like $20 for them if they're a new style. Next up, we have a Free People Lace Floral Velvet Long Sleeve Dress. This one sold for $48, size 4. Um, ooh, we got a pair of Levi's uh, cropped high-rise denim jeans, like a tapered leg. They almost look like a wedgie, but they must not be labeled a wedgie. And those were a size 25, sold for $47. This would be their higher quality denim, like the denim that you would buy at Revolve, the Levi's. Um, I have heard that they sell them at Walmart, but I think it's two totally different lines. Like the Levi's they sell at Walmart and the Levi's they sell at Revolve for $130 or $110 are two different jeans. Um, and the Levi's that I'm typically picking up to resell are the ones that you would buy at, at Revolve or Aritzia. They're their um, premium denim jeans, just to specify. All right, next we have a two-piece bundle. This sold for $85. In it is two Free People items. First one is the all-nighter cropped sweater. And the second one was the slinky baby tee stripe top. I don't know if you guys remember, I was gonna keep it for myself with a pair of anthro jeans, but when I tried on the outfit, I'm quite short in the torso, so wearing like a vertical or a horizontal stripe just makes me seem like zoop. It just made me so much smaller and made me feel a little bit wider. So horizontal stripes don't go well with um, short torso people. <laughs> All right, next up we have a Free People Floral Embroidered Bodice tulle dress and this was in a size four sold for $48 very like whimsical boho I love this dress and I did have it for like probably two months though all right next up we have a pair of Ugg Bonham stout Chelsea boots these were pull-on size eight they sold for $50 I love finding Ugg no matter, I especially love the, the Chelsea style boots. And I think because Blundstones are so on trend right now, the Doc Martin Chelsea boots, if you can find any other high quality leather shoes that are in a Chelsea boot style, I would pick them up. I think they hold good value. Lots of people are looking for the Blundstone look, but don't want the Blundstone price tag. So if you can find alternatives that are better priced, I think they'll do well. I, I would probably take chances on different Chelsea boots, but they have to be a good quality leather. That would be the the like secret sauce, I would say, to, to picking them up. All right, next we have a Lululemon form jacket. This was in raspberry glow light pink, size eight, sold for $74. That is a gorgeous jacket. Ugh, the pink on it, it's like chef's kiss. Love it. Uh, we have another sale, which is a Lulu item, a pair of 2022 Align high rise leggings. And these were in a size four. They sold for $67. We have one more Lulu piece. It's the Forward Flow Poncho, which is a pulled over ribbed knit poncho, I guess. That one sold for $67. So like three sales, all of them over $67 and up. Like that's, that's a really good value if you can come across Lulu. And for that reason, I would pay up for my Lulu pieces because they hold a good value on them. Oh my gosh, we're we're getting through. We're getting through. Next up I have a Revolve brand uh Super Down. This is the Madeline surplus polka dot bell sleeve top. Uh this sold for $56. It was in a size large. I actually kind of regretted picking it up when I originally picked it up because 
I was expecting it to sell better on the Canadian side. And then I was like, oh, does this brand hold as much value in resale? But it did really well on the US side, like $56. Like that's a, that's a good sale. Uh, I probably paid about $12 uh, US for the top. So that's a, that's a pretty good profit. Next, I have a vintage Huntington Ridge zipped up collared wool sweater i guess it's size small this one sold for 57 dollars. seeing a few vintage items selling on my u.s side which is always nice uh, i got a frank and oak jasper button-up shirt this is a flannel men's size large this sold for 52 dollars. i kind of regretted picking this one up as well when i picked it up and i was like uh, maybe frank and oak isn't holding the same value uh, when i looked at solds and comps on frank and oak for the men's button-up they weren't that great i did price it a little bit higher i felt like this was in really good condition it was nice material content and um, it held it so when you look at comps i guess what i want to say is don't always compare your prices like if everything seems really low and you're like but this is a really good quality piece um use your own discernment i'm pretty good at looking things up and being like okay well i think i could probably get this and setting my own price the suggested solds on Poshmark are not the be all end all. And I've heard other big sellers say this where they're, they're they kind of laugh. They're like, yeah, I look at what Poshmark is suggesting for a price, but I also look at what, what the true resale market value is. Another good place you can look at too at solds is eBay to kind of give you an idea. But I have like a general idea of what I know items to be worth in my closet you know in the quality that i get with the pictures that i take with the listing qualities and i'm usually open also to you know a reasonable offer if someone sent me a reasonable offer i would probably accept it but i am going to price on the higher end for the item and um, you know what people the right people will find your items and i guess the biggest thing is just knowing the value of what you have too all right, next up, we have another pair of Lululemon Studio pants. These were in a size 2 gray. They sold for $58. So I got varying prices on the Studio pants, anywhere from like $50, $55 up to $80. I think it just depends what I have available, what people are looking for, and what else is on the market for that style. Uh, we have another Lulu item. This is a pair of Wonder Under High Rise tights these were 28 inch length and size two they sold for $60 I find the newer style Lulu leggings do really well in my closet uh, we only have a couple more sales here I got a joy cherry print blouse and I think this was actually silk I don't see it in the title but I'm pretty sure it was silk as well and that sold for $50 so I've had that oh my gosh I bet you I've had that one for like six months when I saw it show up as a, I think she sent me an offer, I was like, yes, absolutely. Take it. <laughs> it's yours. It's all yours. Oh, yeah. That one I sat on a while. And uh, we got two more Lulu items. So first up is another scuba hoodie. This is in a nice light blue size two sold for $45 and a Swiftly Tech long sleeve pullover size four that sold for $46. And that wraps up the Poshmark sales. We have one more sale on eBay and it's a Lululemon hood light jacket, uh, size six, and this sold for $60. So that's awesome. That's like the last sale I got to add into here. So happy with all these sales, so grateful. Um, interesting fact, I actually, out of the three weeks, the the middle week i didn't put any new listings up so to have all these sales and not have any new listings go up one out of the three weeks i'm just like so so grateful for okay let's jump into the analytics part so the sales that we're going over are from october 26th until november 17th so 22 days on poshmark canada i had two thousand four hundred and fifty eight dollars in sales 
on the US side, I had $2,614 in sales, that is USD. Um, converted into Canadian dollars, that is $3,607. Oh, and then the eBay sale, which was $60. So I did send out some offers on eBay, but um, I haven't, like, I haven't been listing anything over there. So like I said, I just started doing it a couple days ago. I'm hoping to see some more consistent sales coming through. Ideally, if I can see like $500, a couple hundred dollars at least every couple weeks added into it, I think that would be that would be great. Just adding into the more, you know, more sales, more eggs in the baskets. Uh, so putting everything into the same currency, the grand total of sales over the last three weeks is $6,125 Canadian. Converted into US, it would have been $4,464. That's fantastic. Like, that's good sales. I am happy with that. Uh, like I said, I run my business probably on about 12 hours a week at the most. And um, to see these types of sales coming through, like that's a really good hourly wage. That, Like for me, that's a really good hourly wage. Uh, I am kind of juggling a lot of things right now. And um, between working at the hospital two days a week, which are 12 hour shifts, uh, doing my sourcing, doing my listings, uh, shipping, putting away my inventory. Also, I don't know if you guys watched my previous video where I shared I am also a spiritual medium. So I've been putting a lot of time, not a lot of time, but a good chunk of time into my mediumship development as well. And I feel like that's kind of maybe taken away from my YouTube time. So I apologize, but I am forever evolving and changing and life is fluid and it's just where I'm at right now in the moment. And before I move on, I want to say if you have any interest in following my mediumship journey, I'm going to drop a link down below. This is my Instagram. And I also started a podcast where I'm sharing my spirit stories. So if you if you're interested or you want to learn more or you're curious, um, make sure that you pop down below, give me a follow and listen to my podcast. Start at episode one because it's going to be a story kind of starting with episode one and I'm just so excited to share that part of my life with you guys um it's just it's changed who I am like I said if you haven't watched the video I'll pop a link up below or up top and uh check it out I talk about everything that's been going on in my life for the last few months okay so back to the analytics uh I sold 97 items and the average sale price on the Canadian side was $57 an item. I'm just going to slide over. On my US closet, it's dropped down to $48. I don't like to see this. I want my ASP on the US side to be to be over $50. Um, but when calculating this, I did find a bunch of like older style Lulu stuff that was definitely lower ASP items. And I think that brought down, and a lot of them sold on the US side. And I think that's what brought my ASP down. So even though my ASP is down, I still had good profit margins on them because I paid like so cheap for the items. So yeah, it's like, it sounds like a loss, but to me, it's still a win-win. And I'm happy that I came across those items and definitely taking advantage of having the bigger market on the US closet side. All right, top brands um, on my Canadian closet. It was vintage for the month of November. That's so crazy. I can tell it's sweater weather and it's winter time because vintage typically is my best selling brand in winter. Uh, Lululemon was very close to that. And then UGG, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but I sold quite a few UGG items uh, over the last couple of weeks. On my US closet, Lulu is by far my best selling brand, then Free People and Aritzia. And I know a lot of people say Free People doesn't sell as well for them, but for me, all I'm picking up are like sweaters, dresses, jackets, and like very substantial pieces. I try to stay away from tank tops, shorts, sports bras, like they're intimately, it doesn't sell for as much. So I try and stay away from those. But yeah, I've had a good run with free people on my US closet as well. Uh, what else we got here? Trends in my sales. So 80% of my sales in the US and very similarly in Canada 
our offer to likes. And this is just the trend in my closet for the last few months. I find this to be the most successful strategy. So I use Posh Sidekick, no surprise there. And I love like the set and leave. I have stepped away from my business in a lot of aspects of that. I have it set up to send uh, a 20% offer within 30 minutes of someone liking my items. And it's resulted into a lot of my sales. Like I will say that a lot of my sales, I send an offer, someone counters back with a reasonable counter and I accept it. And majority of my sales, that is the process. And because it's been working so well for me, I'm not changing it. Until things don't work, I don't fix. So at this point, I feel like everything's running very smoothly. I'm so happy with Posh Sidekick. Like I know I talk about it. I've seen your comments like it it's just such an easy app. I used to use one that you had to babysit, you had to have your your laptop open and it's just it was a headache. I like I'm not going to lie, it was a headache and now having Sidekick in an app form, set it, forget it, let it go. I don't know. I I just love it. It's given me so much freedom from my phone. I no longer am on my phone trying to keep track of everything. I just let Sidekick do that for me. Then when the sale rolls through or I got a counter or something, then it's in my hands, but the initial offers, yeah, I'm not dealing with those anymore. I've also been sending out 30% offers on weekends, and that's kind of another little thing that I do closer to the weekend when people tend to be shopping. I will send out 30% offer on likes using the bulk feature in my closet and let that run. I am, I guess well, I'm just going to tell you everything I'm using. I am using also the promoted no promoted listings on posh sidekick on the canadian side i think i have it set up on the u.s side as well but i'm also in the beta program right now to see how that goes and we're going to talk about that next too uh so yeah that um the promoted uh, and then i try and do like three middle of the night silent shows as well in my closets on both the Canadian and US side and just trying to strum up more people that see my listings, check out my closet, catch those late night shopaholics hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, those are the strategies I'm working with right now. And if I look at my sales, I feel like they are working. So I'm going to continue to do that. All right, fun fact time. And I don't think this is very much a fun fact. Um, at least it's not to me, but I did get into the beta testing for Promoted Closet on Poshmark and I know I was optimistic and I was like, no, this is going to work. I feel like my closet is an ideal candidate. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it actually is. It's not producing very well for me. So I think I've been in for three weeks. I don't think I was in on the last video or maybe I just got into the trial. I can't remember. Anyways, so for the last 30 days, I've had it set to $25 a week. I've spent $102 as a recording, and the sales from that are $232 with five items sold. I don't know. Like, take out my cost of goods. Like, I don't think it equated to anything. I don't think I'm any further ahead than I was before. Um, but they also recommended that I have it set to, I think, 30 or $35 a week for my closet. So I am willing <laughs> to try something for the sake of YouTube and for you guys. So I, when was, when I was doing the data for this video, I bumped it to $40 a week. I am going to try that for the next two to three weeks until the next video and I will keep you posted if it has an impact on my sales. If I see more sales, spending more, and then also we're gonna look at the analytics of it. Like how much did I spend? What do I have cost of goods? Is this worth it? As of today, with the last 30 days, I'm gonna say no, it's not worth it in my closet. Let's see if I bump it up. Also, I feel like everyone said it took a couple months for it to really build that momentum. So maybe I'm still really early to come to these, you know, conclusions on it. I don't know. I just am not a, I will, I will spend money to make money, 
But when I'm spending money and I'm not actually making money, it doesn't make sense, right? Like business decisions, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to be optimistic for another month and a half. I'm trying to like figure out what word to say. I think I'll give it another six weeks. If it doesn't work, then I'm done. I'm stepping out. I'm bouncing. I will use Posh Sidekick and promote a listings and I'll just stick with that. And I'm totally fine with that. So yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. This is um, this is where it's at right now. All right, sales goals. Do, do, do. Let's get to the end of this video. I feel like it's long enough. Um, my goals are list a minimum of 50 items a week for the next three weeks. I think this will equate into over $2,000 a week in sales. I would like to carry this right through till Christmas, but you know, December's busy. We'll see. Um, life just gets busy and listings is one of the things I also drop now because I've built up my closet and I have weeks where sometimes I'm getting like 60 or 65 out. I don't sweat the weeks that I can't get listings done. I just feel like I have such a good base of good quality of listings that it is what it is. Set my automation, step away from the business and ship what I need to ship. So yeah, that's that's the goal right now. I'd like to see over $2,000 a week in sales and at that 50 items a week with the quality and the average asking price, I should easily be able to, to reach that. So we'll see. Uh, I'm also hoping to step away from my reselling business over Christmas for about 10 days and uh, just try to figure out what I'm going to do if I'm just going to put it on pause, if I'm going to get my daughter to do some shipping for me, like, yeah, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. It would be nice to step away and just completely not think of it and just take a mental break at Christmas, which I feel like I kind of need actually. Uh, so other than that, that's where I'm at. That's what's going on. I've had some really good sales. So even if I'm not showing up on YouTube, my business is doing really well. I have no complaints. Uh, I do want to do a keyword and trends video coming up soon. I'm going to do some research into that. So hopefully you guys will see that soon. And um, on that note, I would love to hear what are your business goals? How have your how has your business been doing the last few weeks? Are your sales up, down? Where are you at? Um, what are some of your favorite brands? Like spill the beans. Give me a little cold notes of how the last three weeks have been going for you and any tidbits that you want to share. I'd love to hear as well. Other than that, guys, I'm going to head out of here. I can't wait to read the comments. I will see you there down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are not subscribed to my channel. And I will see you next time. Oh, wait, I did not do magic fingers. Oh my gosh, that was bad. <laughs> okay, wishing you guys so many sales, lots of sales, heading into fourth quarter, in fourth quarter, heading into Christmas. I just hope everyone makes some money right now. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.